In this section, we're going to start putting together our certificate file. Again, this is a, going to be a config file that's going to describe some details around the certificate that we are trying to obtain. So back inside of my code editor, I'm going to create a new config file inside the k8s directory called certificate.yaml. Then inside of here, we'll put together a little bit of config. As usual, it looks very similar to a lot of the other config files we've put together. We'll start off with an API version, again of certmanager.k8s.io slash v1 alpha 1. The kind is going to be a certificate. And our metadata is going to have a name. And I'll use my domain name in here just to make sure that's really clear what this certificate is for. So my domain was k8s multi com. And I'll put on TLS on here just to indicate that this is a TLS certificate. All right, after that, we'll put down our spec. We're going to provide a secret name of k8smulti.com. You can replace this with whatever your domain name is, both for the name up here and for the secret name down here as well. The secret name right here is specifying where our certificate should be stored after it is obtained by Cert Manager. So this is this little secret that is created as a part of the certificate. Again, we do not have to create the secret ahead of time. It will be automatically created for us by Cert Manager once it obtains the secret. After that, we'll define a issuer ref. The issuer ref is a reference to the issuer that we set up and want to use in order to obtain the certificate. So for us, our certificate issuer is going to be let's encrypt prod. So for issuer ref, I'll provide a name of let's encrypt prod. And then we'll also designate a kind on here as well. The kind is just indicating the type of issuer that's being used. Our type of issuer is a cluster issuer. So my kind back over here will be cluster issuer. Okay, so that's the boring part. Now here comes the more interesting stuff. We're going to put down a common name. My common name is going to be k8smulti.com. So for you, it's going to be just your domain name with the TLD on there as well. The common name is what's going to be put on the certificate in bold letters saying this certificate is good for any address of k8smulti.com or whatever your domain name is. So again, if you say go back over to any existing web page that you might have access to and look at a certificate and then look at the details on right there underneath details, it lists out a common name in this case of draw.io. And so the common name in this case is saying, yep, this is what the certificate is good for. Now, after that, we'll provide DNS names. And we're going to put down two separate ent entries here. The first entry is going to be your domain name. And then the second one will be the www version, like so. And remember, this is an array, so get the two dashes on there and make sure you've got the correct indentation as well. Now, we're going to not talk about DNS names quite yet. We're going to fill out just a couple more lines, and we'll talk about exactly what DNS names means. All right, so after that, we'll put down Acme. We'll put down config. I'm going to put a dash in here and then say HTTP01, a colon. And then indented inside there, I'll say ingress class is nginx. And then underneath that, we'll put domains. And I'll put down www. All right, so let's do it in order, same order as DNS. So I'll put domains, a dash, because this is an array. And I'll do k8smulti.com, so your domain in this case, of course, and www.yourdomain again. So for me, k8smulti.com, like so. All right, so what's going on here? We've got dom DNS names out here and domain names down here as well. So what's going on is essentially DNS names is the list of all the different domains that should be associated with the certificate. In other words, when we get back a certificate, it's going to be good for a domain name of k8smulti.com, and it's also going to be good for a domain name of www.k8smulti.com. So if a user goes to either of these addresses, our certificate is going to cover it. Now down here, we list out the same two domains again. These are the different domains that the verification process, so this entire back and forth flow, is going to attempt to access to make sure that we actually have access to the listed domain names. 
So it might seem like we are just repeating the same thing twice. Yeah, we definitely are, but that's how the authors put this thing together. So we get the two separate listings. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this certificate config file. So I'm gonna make sure that I save this as well. Now we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back to the next section, we'll do one last little piece of configuration and then we're going to deploy this thing and test it out in production. So quick pause and I'll see you in just a minute.